All right. We went over that video, when, remember? When we covered, like, uh, Blue Lock. Let's do a little hashtag ad right now. Kaka TV. We talked about what is happening with... Where's that video? This one, right? Blue Lock Animator speaks about why it's so bad. And essentially, at that point, it was an animator flew through uh, 8-Bit Studios who was actually not Japanese. I think he was somewhere overseas. It was like an outsourced uh, worker. And because he doesn't have... He can kind of speak out, right? Because he's not like part of the Japanese corporate culture. He, he doesn't have to fear of like, you know, oh no, I'm not, I'm banned from Apis Studios. Oh no. It's like, he doesn't give a fuck. He can get other jobs. And essentially it boiled down to animators are putting into work the final decision-making process of what gets included in the episodes getting filtered out because they want to save money because the ultimate goal, well, the amount of like projects that Apis Studios and Bandai Namco, right? The production committee, the final decision makers who decide how many products are you getting and how much, you know, budget or resources are going to be there. That was kind of like really bad compared to 2022 when Blue Lock Season 1 was happening. There was only, you know, Blue Lock and some other project for Apis Studios. Now there's many, many different things on top of the Blue Lock movie, which made it so bad. But we got an interviewing a real Blue Lock animator. I love to see this. I posted a video about the Blue Lock Season 2 anime recently, and I was shocked to see that the animator that I talked about in that video actually commented on it. I reached out to him, and then he said he was down to do a quick interview to explain what really happened and set the record straight. And in okay. this interview, he actually talks a lot about how the animation industry works and why Blue Lock's production specifically was so poorly managed. So enjoy the interview. Let's uh, go. So do you want to quickly introduce yourself? What do you do? Uh, how do you get started? Yeah, I'm Martin. I Damn, Martin. <laughs> it's pro Pat Victor. It's just him about to do some fucking preacher curls. I'm not sure, but I see your guns, Martin. Um, I guess he's also obviously not Japanese. So another, you know, animator that can freely speak out without having, I guess, the same type of consequences like a Japanese animator ha might have. Uh, most recognized like Martin Kings in social media. I've been working in anime industry. I Is this the same guy? I honestly don't remember the guy's name that we, you know, read the post of before. This might be the same freelance guy, but uh, let's keep going. Things in social media. I've been working in anime industry uh, about like almost two years. In December will be two years. Nice. And nice. I worked in <gasps> Dan Dan. We got a Dan 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 animator up in this house, bro. In Nier Automata, uh, Ranma. These are the, the most famous anime that I Okay. Now, okay. I the most important question here. Uh, who's yeah. your favorite Blue Lock character? <laughs> Maybe Rin or... Yeah? Mm, I might as well be Bachira. I love his uh, seeing his Bachira, yeah. and stuff. My favorite character right now is Shido because of how much of a wild card he is and how much like more fun you know, the moments are whenever he does some crazy bullshit. Uh, have you read the Blue Lock manga, by the way? Uh, no, I don't read manga. Oh, okay. All. Okay, yeah. fair enough. How did you get the job to work on Blue Lock? Was it like an email or... Um, I was working with certain PA like for mm -hmm. a year maybe and he invited me to to be part of blue dog like stuff uh, without contract like uh. anime studios continue to rely on freelancers freelance workers proportion of the labor force working remains at high nearly uh high, nearly one year after japan implemented a qualified invoice system that also eliminated consumption tax exemption for small businesses earning less than 10 million yen a year so think about the little loopholes you can have, right? You have this qualified invoice system that is basically tax-free for small businesses earning less than $10 million a year. I'm sure there's ways to kind of, you know, move the numbers around so that you are tax exempt by, you know, utilizing this loophole. There's all studios, employees, freelance workers. 82% of studios employs freelance workers and 19% no freelance workers. I'd love to know which studios are just all doing in-house. Maybe it's audacious for me to assume, but KyoAni, some actual GigaChat studios that are focused on, you know, providing the best for its workers to make the best product possible for the consumers. I'm not sure. Major studios only, 92%. Specialty studios only, 76%. But still, you can see the overwhelming amount of studios utilizing freelance workers when making anime. The 90% of the anime works. I was, as I said in the TikTok, I was supposed to be part of five episodes. I'm pretty sure this guy is the one that we read the uh, post about. And I think he left by episode two because all the shit that he was putting in was being cut. 
and it's just like it's a failing project why would i want to just like it, it not only on top of like how much passion you have for it of like i don't want to do this because you're not loving this you know anime and giving it the adaptation it deserves but also you know i bet the pay was shit too i think or seeks i don't know yeah and i remember from your tiktok as well you said that the work started a few months ago and that at the beginning it wasn't too bad do you have like a rough timeline of you know the blow season two production yeah i think the, the deadline wasn't that bad could be better but but yeah the problem isn't that, that the timing at least in my episode i was the the, the second one um and so for blue Oak episode two you essentially were in charge of <laughs> couldn't lay out for around 20 shots right yeah i did uh 22 cuts nice of just layout yeah, and then cuts. do you want to quickly explain what you know the layout artist does rough animation uh setting all the you read up on it. Anime companies be training Vietnamese art students to specifically work for them. It's crazy. And you know what? That is the best way to kind of like, if you're a business and your only goal is to maximize profits, right? One of the biggest costs, operating costs is going to be, you know, employees, the amount of, you know, like salaries you provide for different, you know, animators and such. And I'm not talking about ethics or morals. I'm thinking, think from the perspective of a greedy corporation that's only goal is to make money. I think it is in their best interest to obviously utilize uh, younger kids, younger people, people who are not veterans of the industry that are probably naive and don't really know how to fight on their behalf. Eager animators who just wants to get their foot in the door. And if you can have a pipeline of students, you know, offshore, where even like due to the different currency and financial situations, you can offer them such a low ball amount of money to produce the same work compared to, let's say, hiring one Japanese animator. That makes a lot of sense to me. Camera moves, the pants, the BG moves, the character movement, Great shadows episode. and highlights, writing the the time charts, the separating the layers appropriately. How long would you say it takes to, you know, lay out a single cut? And for those who don't know, a cut is basically almost like a scene in an anime, right? Okay. Where I know it can, you know, mm. vary Couple seconds. Widely, yeah. so maybe what's like a good range for... A simple and he did like what, 22 cuts, right? Well, dialogue scene to a super heavy yeah. action cut. I think uh, like for dialogue, it's a good time to do in maybe a day or half a day. Really? A day to half a day. And I don't even know what that means. Because is this day an eight hour work schedule? Or is the day 24 hours? Is it taking 12 to 24 hours? Or is it four to eight hours? And one single cut. A cut, again, defined as a scene. I don't know how long it's going to last. I'm sure it ranges. It could be like five seconds of a scene. It could be like 10 seconds and beyond. But a day or half a day. A day or half a day. But yeah, um more complicated one would be three days or a week. Wow, Bam. yeah, for a single cut. <laughs> yeah, for I one cut, one single cut, if it's simple dialogue, half a day to a day, if it's some action happening, then it's gonna be three days to a week. And now can you start to realize why <laughs> they are just like the blue lock, like soccer animation? And like the most recent episode was very interesting too because everything aside from soccer, is actually so so good but if you think about like the overall like build up and everything and then compare it to the actual soccer stuff happening it's not even like the same anime and it blows my mind and if you think about the amount of time investment it takes for the actual animation for the soccer stuff it makes a lot of sense why they want to min max on that part specifically I'm currently doing like a normal talk scene in maybe two hours. Like I can do of layout uh, a three or two cuts a day. Have you ever cut your balls while shaving? I <laughs> what? This is an ad. Motherfucker, you made a nine minute video and you're about to hit me with like a one or two minute ad section about Manscaped? It's gonna be Manscaped, isn't it? Yes. Your balls will thank you. Low key, I want to try it. Low key, I, I, I do want to try. I hear the trimmers are really, really good. And like the best way to shave your balls, gentlemen, <laughs> use a lot of soap.
you want to make sure the water is hot. Whenever you're shaving anything, right? You want to make sure that your skin has made contact with like warm to like hot water and it gets that softened up. And then you have some like, rather than shaving cream, I think just like regular soap. Obviously there's like shaving cream soap or whatever. Anyway, just regular soap will just do it. But I hear that this manscape shit is actually fucking crazy. Uh, is there any, <laughs> is there any guides? <laughs> the crop soother. I, I, it's... I thought that they would maybe play more into like the memes because like it does say like your balls well thank you and I'm sure it, this is just for the balls there's probably even more promo code adikendo 20% off for international shipping you know what you know what here here's the manscape link <laughs> here's the manscape link go check it out and a free gift. So what are you waiting for? Use promo code Arikendo at manscaped.com. All right. I'll link in the description. You also mentioned the problem was mainly with like the production committee and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I never. Wow. Okay. Here is an actual diagram of the production committee. So production committee system. So far, my understanding of what a production committee was, was basically the most important people, whether they be from an actual studio, like Apis Studios or part of producers. Which is just, you know, a studio I think can be producers, but it, they all kind of get involved to decide, like, how is the resources going to be split? Who are going to be taking which projects? That's kind of the vague idea I had in the top of my head. So we have at the very top a sponsor with an ad rate. An ad agency right below the sponsor, then the TV station, then there's the production committee. And at the production committee system, you have... TV, DVD, animator, book. I'm not sure this is really good enough diagram for me to understand right now. Let's let them explain. Where, like blame or put guilt in the, the, the studio. The, yeah. the committee is like all the people that put money in the project. So That's right. They, they... Like they're all the investors, the most important like people who ultimately has the final say because it's their money funding the projects. They put the, the deadlines, they put when the, the episodes will be premiered. So mm -hmm. the oh. studio, it's part of the, that committee to you know, try to negotiate the deadlines. To the studio, it's hard because not always have a good percentage in this committee. Like right. they have, I don't know, 20% or 10%. When the committee, it's like like big fish people, like with a tons of money. So yeah, yeah, they took the decisions thinking about money. Mm -hmm. Once you had finished, um, you know, making the layout for your cuts and you submitted to someone, they just didn't have enough time, so the movement was removed. Yeah, yeah, I think that that was it. That's the thing. Imagine investing so much time into these cuts, especially the action cut, where it could take three to fucking a week, three days to a week, bro. And he put that shit in there. At the final stage, they cut it in order to save the resources. How does that make sense? Imagine being this animator. You put your heart and soul into this fucking project. You're probably not getting paid well. But it's a passion project, right? It's a labor of love. And maybe if you work just hard enough, you can get acknowledged and you can get better roles in the future. You just get shit in the face. They will just say, oh, all that hard work and dedication? We don't actually need it. Because at the end of the day, we got to had the wallets of our investors and that's all that matters decision like i can say certainly that that was the problem because when i when i do my job like it's so isolated isolated yeah 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 it's like an isolated job because you're you're just contacting with one production assistant and huh. you don't even know what uh, what are the other animators in the same that's crazy that's even more impressive how everything, like, comes together. Like, you're just isolated. You don't even know what team you're on. You're not collaborating with other animators. You're by yourself, siloed in. And you're told to, you know, make these cuts. That, that, that seems kind of dystopian. You don't even know what the fucking per- You have one production assistant, no other animators. You don't know who's on your team. And you're just fucking sending shit in. And then the machine tells you, nope, we're not going to accept it. Uh, episode so it's mm. difficult to me to say that was the problem but yeah i think it was it was a problem like with the time but i think it was a good decision to basically match the deadline um and yeah. i also heard that there was from your tiktok that there was you know the pay wasn't great i think oh yeah i bet the pay is absolute trash we already know that like and i think the video game industry is also a good comparison or other industries where it's 
all passion. As in, there's so many people wanted to get into it because they're fans of video games or anime and different stuff, and they're willing to just take pennies because there's like 10,000 people lined at the door that'll just do it for free if that means that they have a shot at entering the industry. Then, because of poor, you know, labor movements and union rights and employee, uh, employer power balance, what the employers can do is just, you know, pay you shit. And you have no leverage to kind of like say, no, I want to get paid better, right? Because, again, there, for every one of you, there's so many other dudes just waiting outside a door, just waiting for their chance. And it is such a predatory power imbalance in, in capitalism. And... It should, theoretically, if it was actually free market capitalism, then by having other offers at different companies, then other people will actually pay the right amount for the talent, and those talent will then go to those companies. But quite often, that's in theory. And in practice, that doesn't happen at all. Tie that in with the whole Japanese hive mind mindset of you know, conforming to, you know, what is traditionally just a collective mindset. You don't speak out for yourself. You want to stay in line. And even though all these different injustices are happening, you can't really freely speak on behalf of it because of that kind of ideology and culture there, which is just like such the perfect breeding ground for the most corrupt capitalism to happen, in my opinion. The pay wasn't enough because, like, draw the characters was tough because the character has a lot of details. Mm. Uh, the, the animation is, is it's difficult because there are too many characters. To draw too many characters, you have to be well paid and have more time to, for it. This past month, I'm around to uh, 10000 $65 USD. Sorry. 30 cents, my bad. That's a monthly salary. He got paid $65.38 a month. And now, this money could get you far in other parts of the world, where again, your economy is shit compared to the US dollar, where maybe you could get by on like $5 USD, you know, a week in certain parts of the world. And this is the most like um, predatory shit too, where because... And someone else mentioned about, like, you know, they're trying to, you know, enforce this pipeline of, you know, uh, grooming, quote unquote, Vietnamese students, right? I bet the US dollar would pre go pretty far in US. And to them, maybe they think they're getting a good deal, but they goddamn know that this money probably doesn't go far for their locals. But by having, like, other animators abroad, they can be paying even less money. It's so, so predatory. And there is nothing you can really do about it. I was Indian. Blue Log was less than half of it. Oh, wow. So so pretty considerably lower. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, like a, a rookie animator price. When you start, <laughs> you, that's the amount when you start. And, and you would say... What? 32... USD was from Blue Lock out of the 60 something dollars, right? So roughly half of it. So that's the uh, rookie uh, experience for an animator in Japan. And I'm not sure if this is, it's, it, it's incorrect to say Japan probably because he's not a Japanese citizen as a Japanese animator. He's like living abroad. And I think, it's my assumption, I think he would get paid less compared to Japanese animators, again, due to the whole currency, you know, changes. So just think about that. That is the entry level experience for an animator. You work on Blue Lock, amazing project, such a popular show, and you put your heart and soul into it. And after a month, you get paid 32 fucking dollars. Like, <laughs> this is so, so sad. And it's so, so unfair. And what are you supposed to do, right? At the end of the day, the ones who write the laws, the ones who make the regulations, those motherfuckers are all enjoying the money at the top. And then the people at the very bottom, right? And I'm not saying like they're at the very bottom of the society. I'm talking about this fucking system. The people at the very bottom have nothing they can really do to, you know, argue with these dudes because they're funding it, right? So the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. This is a constant theme that's happened throughout life and... It's just like, bro, 32 fucking dollars is the rookie amount to expect. 
like a a rookie animator price when you start <laughs> you, that's the amount when you start and and you would say like the the drawings are very detailed like the line count is more than maybe what you would normally see for uh, yeah definitely definitely okay. the the shading and the, the, mm. the details in the characters was uh, pretty high yeah the, there was like maybe 10 scenes that i did that wasn't cut it out or or Wow! 10 out of 22 scenes wasn't cut out. Amazing. What happened to the other 12? Cropped. Kind of being a little speculative here. What do you think this means for the rest of season 2? And <laughs> what do you think it means? <laughs> well, it's really interesting because the cope right now that we had for Tower of God as well, because Tower of God and Blue Lock, guess what? Same production committee. It is the same production committee for Tower of God and Blue Lock. Guess what it is? Bandai Namco. That's right. They have their hands on both projects. But for Bandai Namco for Tower of God and the Answer Studio kind of working on it, it looks like the Workshop Battle arc in the most recent episode, it gave me some hope. It was genuinely decent. I think it's very disingenuous to say that the most recent Tower of God episode was trash. Obviously, it's not living up to the expectations it could be. But compared to the other shit and the cope that we had of like, guys, I promise all the fight scenes, they're going to be half good. By the time workshop battle happens, it is now. Now, who knows how long it's going to last? I'm just using the last episode as, you know, an example. But for Blue Lock, the U20 trailer, and this is the most worrying thing, is because trailers and openings, you're supposed to be highlighting the best parts of the anime to catfish the audience, to give them a false sense of expectation so that they'll watch the first couple and then maybe they'll stick around, right? That's their goal. The trailer itself <laughs> wasn't really moving. That worries me. Of like, oh man, we've been saying the budget's been saved for U20, U20, and now the U20 trailer was dookie. The most recent episode of Blue Lock, the hype and the buildup leading up to it before the actual fucking, you know, match started, it was great. I honestly thought that this is some A1 picture shit in terms of handling all the different background assets and subtle little details. Like, there was like a moment where, you know, there's like a food plate and they're, you know, bringing it down and you can see the reflections of the waters and the soy sauce palette and it's like slightly moving around. Like, that level of detail is like, what the fuck? Where is that in the soccer match? If the soccer match actually starts, then it's dookie. I am still gonna cope. I hope that the last five minutes of real-time soccer play in the U20 arc is where they all save the budget because I'm, I'm hoping that they backloaded all the hype shit. <laughs> maybe. But at this rate, maybe the new cope is uh, they're saving the budget for season three, guys. No, they're saving the budget for Tensura. Why not? Let's go with that cope too. And scenes that I did that wasn't cut it out or, or cropped. Kind of being a little speculative here. What do you think this means for the rest of season two and or cooked. the U twenty arc? Is it probably gonna have the same limited movement? I don't think that it's a problem like you can <laughs> fix like in, in a month or two months. Mm. So the problem always it's like a snowball. Ah, uh, the more and more it goes, the worse and worse matters it is. It's too fucking late. You can't just like treat the symptoms mid season either they had the plans from the beginning or like maybe like tower of god like who knows maybe their entire plan was to actually do that but for blue lock maybe this is the extent like uh, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger so the people that in fifth or seventh episode probably will have a a, a bad time for for do his work yeah. yeah i feel bad and I don't think it's this guy's fault for leaving, right? I will never blame this guy for standing on business and leaving, you know, the studio here. And obviously there's going to be less animators in the project now. But like, if you don't take your stand and show these motherfuckers, like you mean business and you try to do things to hurt their wallet, nothing will really change. And of course, the employees are the ones that's going to be handling the brunt of, you know, this outcome. And honestly, if they all walked out, and I had the same opinion when Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 was airing, with MAPPA, you know, doing some crazy shit, and the animators all tweeting shit, and it was quite crazy. If they all just decided to walk out and say, fuck this, we're done, I would respect that. And even if the anime season ended and I couldn't farm that shit anymore, perfectly fine with me. There's so many different things that we can farm, and I would never fault the workers for standing on business and working for better quality of life, some fairness, right? But it's like they can't really do that either.
because a lot of people don't have the freedom to just, you know, work for another project. And if, I don't know, there's, there's got to be a much more different experience for like an overseas animator versus a Japanese animator who is working in that fucking shitty corporate culture. It must be so hard to just, you know, go against the popular narrative. And not even that, what about your job outlook? What about your livelihood? You can't just quit a job without another one lined up. And it's hard to just get another one lined up because you're working on a job already. You see how the system already creates a scenario where it's almost like impossible for you to get ahead. You can't even do the things to, you know, impact their wallets because you still are impacted by your livelihood. It's, it's difficult. Like a good time to prepare an anime is like a year or a year and a half. But I don't think Blue Lock have like even i don't know eight months or or, or i don't know even. i feel like anime fans in general kind of assume that budget is a big thing yeah. when it yeah. comes to anime like how important is budget actually yeah it is well i think the budget and i'm sure he has he, he knows for sure i because like no matter what the budget is if i was like a sponsor and if our goal was to milk these anime trends dry then I would probably min-max the budget and give the least amount possible to have the most minimum viable product to showcase to the audience and then just like take in the short-term money. And here's the sad part. If you, like, I think I still have the same opinion that one single anime, one significantly good anime with a lot of love and care poured into it can have more impact than like tens of different shitty, you know, animes they get pumped out. Frieden, I keep going back to that example where dedication and love was poured into it. They took their time to put out something great. And the impact, the long-lasting impact that Freedom will have, I bet they're going to make way more money for the investors, right? But here's the thing. That's still a little bit of a gamble. To You have to think, like, long-term. You have to then hope that all the investment to this one project will actually pop off. And there's a good chance that it might not after putting all that you know, investment in. So then think about from the investor, the sponsor's like uh, perspective. Would you rather gamble on this notion that one single show can do really well and make you even more money or take the safe route where maybe you wouldn't make as much money, but it's a guarantee of pop, you know, pumping out mid shit over and over again? It's important, but it's not the main problem because as we said in Jujutsu Kaisen was some similar mistakes than, than Blue Look. Some famous animators said that mm -hmm. they was paid like 2,500 yen. So the budget isn't the problem. But here's the thing. I think the budget is a problem. What he's saying is budget isn't the problem because those animators were paid that much, yet, you know, work was still put out, right? I get that. I, I, I understand that context. But I still think the budget is a fucking problem because if you paid motherfuckers more, I bet they'd be more motivated to work. It's just that I think, uh, MAPPA? <laughs> They whip their workers, I think, uh, a lot efficiently better than, let's say, 8-Bit Studios. If there is, like, a tier list of, like, shitty corporations, you know, overworking their workers to get a better product, I think MAPPA is on a different tier than 8-Bit Studios. Therefore, the $16 budget here, that's why this shit still looks good. At all. It's like, the problem is not to having a, a, a well stuff. That's Wait. right, the talent and the time, right? I don't think AP Studios is really on the tier of MAPPA. I think MAPPA still is a household name, right? If you have good talent and they're sticking with, you know, huge brand name companies, even if they're not paying well, right? I bet that because of the localized talent of the brand names, you know, leverage, that despite having a shitty, you know, pay, that the product is still going to be good. Compare that scenario with like a studio like Epic Studios where you might have lackluster talent compared to MAPPA, right? Of course it's going to be fucking worse. I'm not saying that the, the director in Blue Dog wasn't enough or was poor or bad. I, I don't say that. But yeah, when it's different when you have a, a director or a top, 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 top director that can help the, the team. Is there anything else? That's the thing, right? It's teamwork at the end of the day. If you have some goat of the industry who's been around the scene and can inspire all these new people to work together and deliver a, you know, a polished product with the same vision, I think that's what JJK will be, even if the budget is limited. For Apis Studios, I guess it's not really the case, and we just kind of have a mid-director that doesn't really know what he might be doing. Compare that also, and I don't even know how the work environment is at MAPPA either in terms of like, you know how he said... Martin said that, like, 
you're just siloed and you don't even know who your other teammates are and you have one production assistant and that's it like what do you think is gonna happen when everyone's just working in pods that have no sense of the shared vision you kind of want to clarify quickly the entirety of what you said on the TikTok. I feel like some people have kind of taken what you said and ran with it. Yeah. And just kind of making things up. So is there anything you want to like clear up? Just set this Yeah, for sure that I'm mm. done blaming the studio or yep. the, the director or the my. Yeah. And every one of these people are who I'm not blaming at all. Right. A studio is comprised of more than just the animators, the director, the animators, the production of the distance. They have no choice. They're forced in impossible hands, dealt by the production committee. And those people are the ones responsible for this bullshit. And the people who suffer, you know, they're, uh, like, the people who suffer the consequences, it's these people. And this is what sucks about it. Production assistant or, I don't know, all the people involved, I never, never, never say that they were the problem. Because as I know, they think that I said confidential things, but isn't confidential that it's a problem like always happening in all the productions. But just I was just cl cl clarifying the problem to the common people that doesn't know how the industry works. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people, myself included, right? Very ignorant about how the industry works, right? What really are the best business practices? What is actually happening? Many stupid kids immediately say, fuck the studio and the animators. But you don't realize that they're working with an impossible demand. It is so, so unfair. And then the people then you blame are those people who can't do anything about it, right? It's kind of the similar thing of like, maybe it's not the best example, but like, you ever go to a restaurant and you don't give a tip because it was mid-service and then the service girl or the guy shows up and says, Wow, you didn't tip. I'm mad. But it's just like, think about that example for a moment and compare it with this. Right? Both working class motherfuckers are blaming each other when they should be realizing, why does the tip even exist? Who created the system? Your boss is subsidizing your pay through the client's fucking tips. Your boss isn't paying you well, but rather than you, you know, understanding the root source of the problem, the monkeys are fighting amongst the monkeys. Right? While the actual puppet masters, the one who truly have the power, are anonymous and just hide behind the scenes. It's kind of similar here too. Where stupid kids are going to shit on the animators when they have no clue that beyond this, who exists at the top that created this shitty system to happen? Why are we so divided? Because the average person is stupid. It's so easy to use divide and conquer to just rally up the monkeys, to make them busy and make them fight amongst themselves, to not be aware of what the root cause of the problem is. This happens quite often in pretty much anything, even in politics, the recent election stuff, that's pretty much it too. Now, this isn't the full interview. In fact, it was over 30 minutes long. And if you want to see that, that's going to be on my second channel, the link down below. Oh, shit. Uh, but make sure to check out all of Martin King's socials down in the description. He's a... All right. Well, that's pretty much the video. And it builds off a little bit more off that video we farm, you know, reading the Reddit comments, which was pretty much, you know, everything that Martin was saying. But that's pretty much it. Thank you, Martin, for, I don't know, being brave enough to come on a platform and speak out your opinion because, you know, you could get blacklisted and might not look good for other people in terms of, you know, job prospects in the future. But there is a link to the video. Please go check them out. Please go help out Adi Kendo's videos. I will see you guys next time.